From Los Angeles to a worldwide audience, this is Boaz Power TV, where we take your life to the next level. Now, internationally known speaker and author, here's Boaz. Hi, welcome to the Power Show. You are part of the Power Nation, and I'm delighted that you're here. Because here we help you improve your attitude, your relationships, your finances, and your career. This is episode number 169 on Boaz Power TV, and I call this the truck that drove on the ocean. It was June 24th, 2003, when a U.S. Coast Guard cutter stopped a most unusual vehicle crossing the Florida Straits from Cuba. It was hard to mistake in it, while it was also hard to believe. Yes, straight ahead right there was a green 1951 Chevrolet truck on the water. Upon closer inspection, it was discovered that the truck was equipped with a series of barrels that formed pontoons on either side. On board the truck were 12 Cubans, including Louis Grass, his wife Isora, and their son, Angel Louise. Their driving ambition was freedom to live in the United States, specifically in Miami, with Isora. She had a brother there. Now, since a number of my relatives perished in the Holocaust, I have some understanding of what persecution can do and why people would do almost anything to live in a free land. However, what happened to these Cubans is truly an amazing story of determination and perseverance. Louis Grass is a diminutive mechanical engineer. He was the truck's second owner. He had bought it several years before from a neighbor in Cuba. Now, once converted into a floating vehicle, Grass considered it a great creation. So, on that fateful June night in 2003, Louise and 11 others boarded the truck and hit the water running. Cuban state security personnel couldn't believe what they were seeing. They fired flares of the vehicle and came close to hitting the gas tank. As they frantically called their superiors to report a truck was headed for Miami, they were reprimanded for drinking while on the job. After the Coast Guard intercepted these escapees to freedom, it released pictures of their retrofitted amphibious contraption and the Cubans made international headlines. They became known as the Truconauts. All 12 were sent back to Cuba, and their 51 Chevy, considered a shipping hazard, was sunk in a hail of gunfire by the Coast Guard. Well, as Grass watched his beloved truck sink into the ocean, he later said that he swallowed his tears because that truck was, for him, a symbol of liberty. On normal highways, if one were trying to get away from authorities without being noticed, a change of vehicles might be appropriate. That's just what these determined Cubans did. Seven months after their first attempt, 11 members of the group, including the Grass family, took off from Cuba in a retrofitted 1959 Buick. Once again, they were stopped on their watery highway by the Coast Guard. This time, there was quite an outcry from their relatives and exiles in Miami. However, a federal judge, believing that the Grass family would probably be persecuted if returned to Cuba, ordered that they be sent to U.S. Naval Base, the Naval Base at Guantanamo Bay. Now, they remained there for 10 months. It was in December of 2004 that a combined effort by the U.S. government and Costa Rica made it possible for the Grass family and 17 other Cubans to live in Costa Rica. It was in February of 2005 that the Grass family decided to make another attempt to get to America. Their driving journeys across the Florida Straits would end up seeming like catwalks, or shall we say cakewalks, compared to their third attempt. They set out carrying their five-year-old son to hitchhike across five Central American countries to get to the United States. They were going to hitchhike. Wow. 
with no legal papers, Grass, 36, and his wife, Isora, 27, encountered many problems along the way. They spent 24 days on foot, in taxis, on buses, and hitchhiking through Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, Guatemala, and Mexico. They had to make their way through jungles full of snakes, monkeys, and many types of insects. Although the journey was often frightening, they kept their eyes on the goal and stayed positive. Isn't that a secret to life? With very little money, they often slept in the open and did what they could to get milk for their son. What began on February 16th in San Jose, Costa Rica, ended on March 12th, as this courageous family finally crossed into the United States at Matamoros, Mexico. Held by immigration officials in Brownsville, Texas for several days, they asked for political asylum. They were paroled and allowed to travel to Miami by van. There they joyfully joined Isora's brother, Ruben Garcia. Now finally in America, Grass plans to get a job and buy a car. There won't be any need for the unusual accessories of his previous vehicles. So what's your driving ambition? If it's important enough, why not take some action today? Be persistent and stick to it. Louis Grass and his family did, and look what happened. They stepped into a whole new world. So the affirmation, a determination affirmation for this episode of Boaz Power TV. Wow, I love that story. Reads as follows, and you may want to write it down. I've identified my driving ambition, and I'm taking steps every day to achieve it. I've identified my driving ambition, and I'm taking steps every day to achieve it. And you want to know what? My driving ambition is for you to take your life to the next level. And if you like these messages, and many people around the world do, please do me a favor. Forward this to five of your friends. Get them to go to my website, boazpower.com, and have them subscribe also to the free weekly broadcast on Boaz Power TV. And perhaps we can help them identify their driving ambition. You are special, you are unique, you are destined for greatness. I see it in you. You are a champion. Have a powerful day. This has been Boaz Power TV. To comment, see other episodes, or to subscribe to this free broadcast, go to our blog at boazpower.com. That's boazpower.com. We're here to take your life to the next level.